Hello, this is Matthew Jackson from Stanford University, and this is our first lecture in social and economic networks. And I'm going to start with just a brief introduction of some of the material we'll be covering. And of course, the most important question we can start with is why study networks? And I think from a social scientist perspective, it's that many economic, political, and social interactions are embedded in social settings, and the structure of those relationships is very important in both determining how people behave and determining what outcomes are. So things like trades of goods and services, uh, most markets are actually not centralized, but, but occur between different uh, parties in bilateral relationships. Sharing of information, sharing of favors, risks, transmission of viruses, opinions, how did you find out about a job? Uh, often through somebody you knew, you know. Um, how do you choose uh, who you vote for? How do you make decisions about products? A lot of times you're talking to different individuals. What did they hear? Uh, how do you hear about your information? Political alliances can be represented as networks, trade alliances. There's all kinds of, of different settings where network structure is very important. And uh, the critical to this is the fact that the networks actually influence the behavior. So if we look at crime, we look at employment, we look at uh, people's investment in human capital, education, um, how they vote, whether they smoke, uh, all kinds of decisions they make uh, are, are embedded in these settings and are influenced by the social structure. So in, in most important from our perspective is that networks come in different shapes and sizes and understanding how they're shaped, what they look like, is going to be very important in understanding what the outcomes are. And so there's uh, a, a lot um, to understand and to model. So <clears throat> the primary questions we're going to be interested in in this course, um, we'll start with just some background on, on structure of social networks, what we know about social networks. Uh, we'll, we'll, most of the course will be looking at how networks form. So do the right ones form? If, if we could actually affect the network formation from different perspectives, would we want to? Uh, how do networks influence behavior? So how, how, what's that relationship between how dense a network is and what the outcomes are and, and so forth? Um, now, this is an area, obviously, which has been uh, researched in, in many different disciplines. And so when we look at the literatures, there's sociology, economics, computer science, statistical physics, mathematics, random graph theory. And so what we'll do here is try and synthesize some of these and bring together a unified viewpoint and pulling models from different uh, perspectives and try and understand what we've learned and also uh, what are important areas for future research as we go along. Now, in terms of uh, areas for future research and uh, current research, we'll be looking at, at theoretical foundations, uh, modeling basically of, of network formation, modeling of dynamics, um, design of networks, how, then understanding how networks influence behavior. There'll be some emphasis at the, the end of the course on coevolution. So that what does that mean? That means that, that uh, who my friends are um, influences my behavior, but my behavior also influences who my friends are. So there's a, a, a co-determination. It's not as if one is set in stone and, and affects the other, but um, both evolve in, uh, together. We'll be looking at, at a lot of empirical work and experimental work as we go along, observing networks, seeing what patterns uh, we do see, um, and, and also you know, with an emphasis on testing theory and understanding regularities and patterns that are out there in the data. Um, one other thing that we'll see at, uh, as the course goes along is methodology. So there'll be a whole series of definitions about networks. Um, for instance, you know, understanding who's central in a, in a network can be measured many different ways. And we'll try and say something about what are good and bad ways of, of doing it for different applications. So there might not be a single way to approach a problem, but understanding what are the different methods and, and is there something we can say about the methods themselves. Um, central focus in this course is really going to be on the models. Um, and the, the types of, of techniques we'll be using are, are one pulled from random graph theory, pulled from uh, mathematics. The other will be using some strategic and uh, game theoretic techniques. And we'll also be using some hybrid models that involve some both choice and chance. And uh, looking at some stat statistical models for, for fitting and analyzing networks and uh, dealing with data. Um, the goals, I'm not going to presume prior knowledge of network analysis. 
Uh, I'm going to try and introduce you to a variety of different approaches. So the idea here is really breadth more than depth. So it's an idea of giving you um, some exposure so that you know what's out there, what are the types of different tools, which tools might be appropriate in different settings. There's a lot more that can be said about each of the subjects we're going to talk about, but this will be more or less an introduction um, to give you an idea of exactly what the tools are that might be appropriate for different parts of analysis. It will also give you some sense of different disciplines, techniques, and uh, what the kinds of questions and perspectives that they take are. In terms of uh, one important aspect when I start the course here is, is really emphasis why do we care about modeling things to begin with. And I think this is an important question that, that will shape the structure of, of what kinds of models we work with and, and how they're formed. And you know, when we look at models, one thing they do for us is give us perspective into why um, we see certain things. So why do social networks have short average path lengths, for instance? Why is it that there's six degrees of separation in the world? Well, we'll see an answer to that that will come out of random graph models. So that just understanding the structure of how things arise at random can help us understand why we might see something like that. So understanding a basic tree structure that underlies social networks will help us understand uh, path length. Um, Models also allow for comparative statics. So if we understand that models change as we change different parameters, that can help us make predictions about how the world might change. So how, how does the component structure change with density? So as we, if, a, if a network has more and more links, what does that do to the overall component structure of a network? It will help us make predictions out of sample. So if you want to come in with a new policy, for instance, you're trying to, to stamp out a flu uh, epidemic, um, how effective does a vaccine have to be? in order to, to limit uh, the, ex the extent of an ex epidemic. That's a question that we can begin to answer with network analysis. Um, uh, things will also, the models will allow for statistical estimation. So if we want to understand, for instance, is there significant clustering, uh, which means, you know, are, are my friends friends with each other? Uh, it, does that happen because of some social force or is it happening just at random? Um, we can t test models, so we can take models and, and then ask, uh, does it appear that this happened at random or does it appear that, that something else was going on? So there'll be statistical tests that we can use once we have models for analyzing that kind of question. Um, in terms of a basic outline of the course, it's going to break into three parts. The first part is going to be background and fundamentals, so definitions, how do we analyze networks, what are some basic uh, properties of networks, characteristics, and along with this will be empirical background. The second part of the course and the central part of the course is going to be network formation models. So we'll look at random graph models and then we'll also look at strategic formation models when people are actually making choices. Um, the third part of the course is networks and behavior. That's going to then take networks and understand how the shape of networks and the structure of networks um, who do you know, how many people do you know, who do they know, and so forth. How does that influence what your decisions are, your behavior, and so forth. So we'll look at things like diffusion and contagions, we'll look at learning models, and then finally what, what's known as games on network or situations where what I do depends on my, the choice of my friends. So if there's a new app out there, do I want to get it? Well, it might depend on how many of my friends get it, and that might depend on how many of their friends get it, and so forth. And so how do we analyze that in a network context? So more or less, these three main parts are going to be the core uh, structure of the course. And uh, there's also um, a textbook which is completely optional that I've written where a lot of the material is going to be pulled for. And in terms of this outline, um, the numbers on the side here uh, indicate the chapters, so one, two, three, four, five, and so forth. These indicate the relative chapters out of the book that, that correspond to the lecture structure of the course. So we'll be moving along through the book um, with, with uh, a, a couple of exceptions in terms of which chapters are covered in which part. So that's the basic outline, and uh, so let's get started. <laughs>